You may be seated. And if for any reason um, things are getting difficult with your kids and it's making you uncomfortable, do we, we have daycare? Oh, yeah, it's here. Yeah, we have a teddy bear room. So there's no need to suffer in silence. Although it won't bother me, but uh, I remember watching my wife for years with both boys over there and thinking, I'm going to kill those guys when we get home. And that was suffering in silence because, you know, I'm not supposed to think that. <laughs> Would you pray with me a moment? Oh, Lord, open my lips that my mouth might show forth your praise. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And Cain said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Thousands and thousands of people's blood is crying out from the ground. Victims of gun violence in our country. To rephrase another piece of scripture where Jesus is separating the sheep from the goats. When was it, Lord, when we saw you gunned down and did not stop the violence? And Jesus answered, whenever you allowed it to happen to the least among us, you allowed it to happen to me. This is probably the fourth sermon on this subject that I've given. From this pulpit, um, this is the most extreme example, although Newtown still is the strongest in my mind because it was three days before our Christmas pageant. Put bluntly, I, I want things to be different. I would like the repetitive cycles of gun violence to stop repeating. And I, I like to think that it's my faith in Jesus that makes me feel the way I feel and feel as strongly as I feel. And I, and, I, and I want to suspect that because you people are here, many of you feel the same way I do. Even if we may disagree about the causes and the solutions and the perspectives. I like to think that it would be hard to follow Jesus and shrug off shootings of any kind, let alone random and mass shootings. So we are going to pray for the victims of the shooting in Las Vegas, and we are going to pray for their families and friends. But I have to say that it doesn't feel like quite the right thing to do, or not the best thing to do. As in, best as in a fitting response, fitting the depths of hell the people we're praying for have been cast into. I mean, if we honestly reflect upon our faith, who among us thinks that God is going to reach out from the divine in response to our prayer, and re wrap these poor people, these hopeless people, in his arms so that their pain is no more. So that their brokenness is no more. So that their grief no longer burns. So that their darkness lightens 
and their emptiness begins to recede. Don't get me wrong. I know that in time, through faith and by the grace of God, some people will find hope and faith and love. And maybe some will be healed even though they cannot be whole anymore. And I know that because I've, I've lost people, not in this way, but I know that's how it works. It takes time. But when people say our thoughts and prayers are with those people, that strikes me as being exactly what none of us actually do believe. That strikes me as the desire for magic. As in presto changeo, they're all better. Even though most of us have to agree that that's not the way God operates in our lives. Or do we say these things because we feel we should do something but don't think we can do anything so we slough it off onto God? Which in me, in my mind, strikes me as a sort of backhanded atheism. Something should be done. Nothing can be done. So let's give it over to God and hope for the best. Or then I ask myself this. Is what we really pray for at times like this in our country that this sort of thing might never happen here? At the Chickering School, at the Dover Church, at the Memorial Day Parade, at the football game, at the, at the Dover Sherburn football field. To us, to our children, to our friends, to our community. And I put this out there because I think these are good questions for us to ask ourselves. Because you'll also remember I started with Cain and Abel and now I moved to Jesus and Pilate. When Jesus is being questioned by Pilate about who he is, he answers, I came into this world to testify to the truth. And then Pilate says these famous words, what is truth? He washes his hands and the sentence is cast. So what is truth? I think that truth is that no one wants to live in a world where people are randomly killed by total strangers in sunned and unexpected orgies of violence from 32nd floor windows with dozens of weapons that he gathered over months and no one knew. Truth? And if it's not your truth, what is your truth on that? Because if faith is about God and God is everything God's cracked up to be as in the center of the universe and the force which enables all of us to be who we are, then we must be in some sort of dance with God around these most significant tragedies. Right? Certainly with our joys too. I mean, it's hard. We know we baptize a child and then we move to this. Because there's so much joy and so much promise. And yet, somehow it seems so much more necessary to get God in the mix when we're faced with heartbreak, with inexplicable cal calamity, with patterns of toxic behavior. Because everyone I've spoken to, at every time something like this has happened, Orlando and Sandy Hook and now Las Vegas and you know, Columbine, and the list goes on, wishes that there was something that we could do to make gun violence better. And also everyone feels like we really can't. There's nothing we can do. And I think if we come to church, we would like our faith 
to offer us an antidote, right? If violence and anger and orgies of random shootings are a disease, then we would like an antidote to that to start making it better so we just don't have to put up with it in our country and live with it and suffer it and wonder what in God's name we are doing offering our thoughts and prayers to people if we in a democracy are the people who are essentially allowing it to happen in one way, shape, or form. We endorse it in one way, shape, or form by not changing it. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a letter from the Birmingham jail in 1963 when he was arrested for protesting. Very different context. So I'm going to translate a little bit for this context. He said, the people who wish there weren't gun violence is great stumbling block in their strive towards a violent free society is not the NRA or the violent extremists but the moderates in church who are more devoted to order than justice, who prefer a negative peace where there's an absence of tension to a positive peace which is an absence of justice, who don't want to rock the boat, essentially. Now Jesus offered all kinds of antidotes You'll remember the stories. He, Jesus constantly stopped and did these things that made people think, well, what in God's name is he doing now? You know, when the, when the people showed up with the woman who'd been commit, condemned for adultery, and they all had rocks in their hand, okay, Jesus, what do we do now? And what's he do? He gets down on his hands and knees. He starts scribbling in the dirt. Time out, folks. And then he says, any one of you who's without sin, go ahead, throw the first stone. And they have to walk away. Or he's about to die, and he allows this woman to pour, you know, 300 days of salary worth of precious oil over his head, and the people are angry. Why didn't we use that money to help the poor? I don't know. Why, why didn't we? Why don't you go help the poor? Why do you condemn that woman? Or when people say, you can't heal people on the Sabbath, Jesus. And he said, really? Okay. And he does. And they're all enraged. But the man's hand is better. Or when the disciples say, what are we going to do with all these people who have to eat? And he said, you give them something to eat. And they figured out a way to do something. One of the passages that's kept, passed over so often in the Bible in churches like ours, is this scripture in Matthew 10 where Jesus, it says, Jesus gave his disciples authority to cast out demons and to cure sicknesses and to heal. And he sent them out to do just that. A demon, we don't believe in demons, but demon is the absence or the opposite of God in the world. And a man in a 32nd floor window randomly spraying people with bullets would fit that definition in my mind. You see a play on words on what they say about Vegas? What happens in church shouldn't stay in church. What happens here should not stay here. What happens here should empower us to go out there and to cure and to heal and to replace demons with God's love. But, here's the twist on what I'm about to say or what I have said. The only antidote that I know to anger and violence is not forcing people to do what they don't want to do. It's compassion and patience and engagement. Jesus also said, why do you see the splinter in my eye and don't notice the plank in your own eye? If you listen to the people who talk about guns in our country, it's not just a gun. Like this is just a pen. 
Guns have enormous cultural and emotional and symbolic resonance for the people who feel strongly about them. So merely saying we've got to get rid of them is not going to cure the sickness in our country. We need to go out household by household and talk with one another about these things that divide us, these things that keep us living in fear from one another, like going to the Bruno Mars concert. Are there any high ground around the Bruno Mars concert where someone can shoot from, right? Or my wife. I don't think we should go down to the boardwalk in Nice when there's a big uh, festival because some crazy person may show up and drive a truck through it. What we need to pray, while we also pray for those people, is to pray for ourselves that we might be the church, that God might grant us the grace and power to do and say what needs to be said and done to bring about the change that everyone longs for which is not victory for guns control people, but peace for all people. 